Sherlock Holmes is not only one of the most famous detectives in the world of English literature, he was also one of the first. Today, when detectives appear in so many books and television programmes around the world, it's hard to imagine just how exciting the Sherlock Holmes stories must have been when they were first published in the late 19th century. The creator of Sherlock Holmes was the Scottish author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Born in Scotland in 1859 and educated in medicine at Edinburgh University, Conan Doyle was a scientist as well as a writer. And it was the combination of these two interests that shaped the character of his groundbreaking detective, Sherlock Holmes. While Sherlock Holmes was a fictional character, Arthur Conan Doyle was often inspired by real-life criminal cases. Conan Doyle's writing was also very influential in the development of what was, at the time, the new detective technique of forensic science. Dr. Carolyn Morton teaches forensic science at the University of the West of England in Bristol. Forensic science is using science to help investigate crimes and then bring evidence to court. There's a range of evidence that's very useful. The best would be something like DNA or fingerprint evidence, where we might be able to say with a fingerprint that one particular person must have left that fingerprint. DNA is extremely good. But all sorts of things like mud on someone's shoes, fibres from their clothing, a bit of broken glass, all sorts of things can be a link between a person and the scene of a crime. She explains more about Conan Doyle's impact on the science. There's not much recorded until really the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who invented Sherlock Holmes, in many ways led the way. He was giving the police and the scientists ideas. He was trained as a doctor. He knew about investigating crime, looking at post-mortem injuries. And in his stories, Sherlock Holmes was investigating using some science. So he was coming up with ideas for linking people to places, following their footprints, mud on trousers, that people weren't doing. And, and he made people think how to use science to solve crime. Today, we often hear about forensic science being used to solve crime. A lot of criminals may have avoided the police if they hadn't left fingerprints or DNA evidence at the scene of their crimes. But now we know more about forensic science from fictional television programmes than from factual news reports. And one programme more than any other might be responsible for this. The American crime drama CSI crime scene investigation. Dr. Lindsay Steenberg is writing a book about forensic science in popular culture. So CSI starts in 2000. Um, the original series is called CSI Crime Scene Investigation and it is about a group of people solving crimes in Las Vegas. It is so popular that it has two spin-off series. Uh, the first series is CSI Miami and the second, which follows several years later, is CSI New York. And CSI is a global phenomenon. The three programmes are shown in over 200 countries to a global audience of around 2 billion people. What's interesting about the current forensic science craze on television is that much of it actually isn't new. Sherlock Holmes is always doing experiments in his house. He's always referring to, to all the books that he's written about, about footprints or, or cigar ashes. And he uses that knowledge um, to help him solve the crimes at hand. Now that is very similar to what happens in the laboratories at CSI. Um, what has perhaps changed a little bit is what's going on in the development of science. So with the discovery of DNA, for example, now we have a different procedure. Generally, every CSI episode has the same structure. There's a crime. The crime scene investigators examine the scene, collect evidence and take it back to their laboratory. They test the evidence 
and it will show who committed the crime. This person will be arrested and they will confess. So why does Lindsay think these stories are so popular? I think CSI really convinced us that in a world that is um, increasingly frightening, uh, where answers aren't clear, where we're not sure who to trust, we can always trust science. They really show science as being able to tell us the absolute truth. Now, science isn't really like it is on television, and I think everybody who watches TV knows that, but it would be really nice if it was. I think what we want is, is, is a system like the science on television that can tell us truth, that can tell us who's good, who's bad, um, and I think that's why it's so popular. Obviously, we all know that science can't be like it is on television. So, what's it really like? Dr Morton helps to train investigators in a special crime scene house, where rooms are adapted to resemble real crime scenes. Teachers can observe the students working in the house. Dr Morton explains some of the differences between the television version and reality. The first thing that happens is a crime scene is sealed off and nobody enters. You think about where you're going to find the evidence and how you're going to go about the search. There are a lot of decisions to be made before you go in, and I haven't often seen that on television. <laughs> then you have to get kitted up, the protective suit, so that you don't leave any evidence from your own clothing or your own hair, your own DNA at the scene. So a mask, gloves, uh, the whole suit. One of the big issues with television dramas generally is that one or two people do the work of maybe 40 professionals in the real world. And of course, none of those meet the suspect and ask questions. Uh, the other thing is the speed with which everything is resolved. It can take a long time to do a lot of the work in the lab and to do a lot of the police investigation. Despite real forensic investigation being so different from the television version, one of the most remarkable things about the popularity of CSI is that it looks like the programmes are influencing real life in a number of ways, good and bad. This has become known as the CSI effect. One positive outcome is that more people want to study science at university. The CSI effect isn't just about the, about the law, about the legal system. It's also, um, it's also changed the way the education system works in, in many ways, because lots of people want to take degrees in forensic science. So the CSI effect is widespread and it is, um, it is sort of changing the way that we think about how science fits into our culture. But there are problems too. Real life and TV drama are not one and the same. And there's some evidence that the CSI effect might be influencing the way people behave when they're on a jury. What they expect when they go serve on a jury is that criminal investigations will work the same in real life as they do on TV. And there's been many interviews with lawyers who are very, very worried about this. And as a forensic scientist, Carolyn has concerns about the CSI effect. I think the biggest negative is that people expect too much. They expect the police to solve crimes very, very quickly, to always find perfect evidence, they expect the evidence to prove guilt and prove what happened. And dramas are always starting with the ending known and you work a story towards that end. Real situations start with the ending unknown. You start not knowing who the offender was, not knowing if you will find them. Like Sherlock Holmes before them, the fictional characters of CSI have captured the imagination of the public 
who still love murder mysteries. And who knows, maybe a hundred years from now, people will still be watching CSI too. <laughs>